Hey guys, Jono here from the OptiZen app. In this video, I'm just gonna walk through how I like to create collection pages on Shopify stores. Depending on what you're trying to achieve uh, as a store owner, you may structure and optimize your collection pages differently, but this is the way I like to do it. I'm not saying this is the, the best way, but it works very well for us. We like to rank our collection pages and by grouping our collection pages with our sub collections, we're able to provide that relevance across different pages and have that silo structure, which works well um, in many cases for uh, different collections, different brands, different types of products, etc. So I just walk through how I do it, uh, how, how I like to, where I like to add content and how I like to add content, how we do our internal linking and then the how sort of that all ties together. Uh, because you've got your products, um, on collection pages and those products are linked to the product links. Once you can provide that relevance and power with your collection pages, it does flow through to the products. There are uh, other elements we work on with products to, to get that power as well, but I'll just talk about the collection pages here now. So obviously uh, we'll just go through the, um, the core features of the collection page. Um, as I mentioned, we like to use them as essentially a hub and we do send links to them and try and get these pages ranking in the search engines and it just powers up um, that silo structure plus it helps the entire site. I'll just zoom in a little bit uh, on this page and get it. Okay, now we're at 100%. So the first thing, we've got our URL. So uh, we like to have our main keyword in our collection URL. That's a no-brainer and nothing new. Generally, we like to, to, to have the URL as a main keyword we're going after uh, within reason. Then we have our SEO title, same thing, like to have our main keyword at the start of the SEO title. And then some uh, variations of the types of products that are within the collection and how those, uh, those actual products relate to the main keyword. So we've got here saddle pads, blankets and squares, all disciplines. Then I like to have one or two sentences at the description of the top of the collection page before the product grid. And that uh, explains what's in the collection, obviously again, a no brainer. And then we like to add some other uh, features such as the brands that are, that are included within this collection and also the types again. But as you can see, we also add internal links. Now, the way we, we build out our silo structure for our Shopify our collections and sub collections is by using uh, tags and using those tags as sub collection pages. So for example, we're in saddle blankets and there are different types of saddle blankets that people might be looking for, jumping, dressage, all purpose and Western, for example. And then we can see this link goes to the saddle pads slash jumping tag page. And if you haven't looked at our, some of our other videos previously, I will uh, briefly discuss in a, in a second how those tag pages work, but you can see we've got our internal links to our other types or sub collections within our main collection. Keep in mind, this is a main core collection. Then also we link out to, you know, some, some other brands and these are just brand collection pages. So we kind of tie in the brands uh, to this main collection as well. Then we have our, our products. Uh, in this particular site, we've only got to load more section. We don't have pagination. So if we click on load more, it will open up uh, more products within that collection. Then what we like to do is also add content below the product grid. And we do that using our OptiZen app by adding in, uh, simply adding in content below the, the actual collection, below the product grid. And we have our, um, a little bit of content here. You can add what we like, whatever you like, but what we like to do is add a uh, question and answer or frequently asked questions and also add in our FAQ schema as well. So we've got popular questions here. Below you can see some of the most common questions were asked about saddle blankets and pad collection. There's some typos there we need to fix. So then we have either H2 or H3. We've got our question heading and then actually answer the question uh, below each of those questions. So here on this page, we've got three. And then again, you can see we also further add some internal linking uh, and so this particular link here that let links to another type of the main core collection, another type of saddle pad. And again, we link out to some other brands, 
but essentially using this section here to add in our frequently asked questions it not only helps uh, structurally and helps provide more relevance to the page but it helps with user experience as well and people actually do read these questions we also add as i mentioned the frequently asked questions schema uh, i might do another video on how we actually add that we actually add faq schema for collection pages within the collection uh, liquid file uh, in your theme and uh, just by using a an if this collection page is statement and calling out the FAQ schema for each particular collection page. Not hard to do, uh, just a little bit techy. Okay, so then if we we'll scroll back up and let's just look at one of these tag pages. So if we click on jumping, so you can see now it takes us to the jumping tag page. So we've got that uh, the type of saddle pad, which is jumping, nice, nice and neat within the URL. So we've got that silo structure. So you can see here we create these in a similar way. We've got our, our SEO title for that tag page, which is unique. Then our uh, H1, and then the same setup for our description above the product grid. And then linking back out to using uh, variations of our anchor text, linking back out to the other types within this main collection. So we're linking to the other sub collections uh, in this particular store we've got our breadcrumbs that actually link back to the main collection so we're tying all the sub collections and the main collections together along uh, each of the the sub collection pages so we, we create a nice tight structure for this main collection and then all the sub collections so then again you can see it's the same setup uh, for this tag page we haven't added any content below the product grid but with the OptiZen app we can actually do that so the key with this is using tag pages is having the ability to add unique SEO title, unique H1, unique description, and uh, giving you that, that ability to create unique optimized tag pages within a structure, which you're not able to do with Shopify uh, natively. So that's essentially the a brief rundown on how we actually create our collection pages. So just go back to the main collection. So if you can see, we've got our, uh, a unique SEO title and unique H1, unique content on our collection page. And then if we go to one of the tag pages and we've got more unique content for these particular tag pages. And again, this is another tag page. You can see we link out again to, to different types of uh, actual, uh, different types of sub collections uh, or even types of products um, within this description. So that was just a quick video just to explain how we do it. This works really well for us. Um, to do it this way, you need the ability to, to add these, the, the unique information or unique meta within the tag pages. The OptiZen app does that. So you can click the link below to, uh, to get some information and see how that can be done. Uh, but not only do we have our uh, ensure our collection pages are real pa really powerful, but we tie it all together with our tag pages. They rank on their own as well because we can index these tag pages and they're unique and uh, it just continues to grow and work well on all the sites we use it on. Thanks. Send us a message or leave a comment and we'll talk to you later on.